beautiful children. Thank Can. you. Thank you. It's a blessing. It is. Grandchildren. And grandchildren. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I guess we've met about two years ago. Uh, we were both volunteering here at TV Santa Barbara. Uh, you had already started several years back. Yeah. And I remember uh, I've seen you doing all this great work uh, while you're limping a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know the reason why. I thought probably you had an accident, you broke your leg, and uh, this is why. Then later, I learned something different. Uh, you learned that I've had my knees fused, uh, that I have orthopedic issues from a condition I have. Uh, when you say fused, like you stop them from moving? The when I was very young, there was damage to my knees from a genetic disorder that I have called hemophilia. Hemophilia is internal bleeding that um, has to be stopped with a replacement therapy that's IV. And that's something I was born with and it caused a lot of damage to my joints. So can you tell us more about, about hemophilia? What is it exactly? Hemophilia is a, a genetic bleeding disorder that blood doesn't clot properly. It clots a little bit, but not enough. So uh, cuts are not an issue. But internal bleeding, because of the, it just continues to slowly bleed, can cause a lot of damage to joints or can cause death if you have a, a brain injury. Wow, um, and th that internal bleeding would start like that? It can, it can start spontaneously, yeah, yeah. And so for, you know, my whole life I've had to get um, blood plasma or re replacement therapy, what I was missing from other people. And uh, was uh, the medication supported by the government? How, how did you get the, that medication? Definitely. The, um, well, it started out as, as I would use um, fresh frozen plasma, and I would get it at the hospital. I had to go to the hospital, and it meant spending a lot of time in the hospital. And then uh, they came up with a product, the concentrate, where they turned it into a powder, and all you had to do was add water, which meant that I can carry this and to different places and have a little more flexibility, a little more freedom. Um, I think I was about six years old when they developed that. So it was much better, but it was still made from blood. And that became an issue later. Why? Well, um, I, I, in dealing with hemophilia, in and out of the hospitals, using this product, this product is, was made from other people's blood. And thousands of people for one treatment that I used was exposing me to thousands of people's blood because of the way they made the product so when I was 19 I found out that this product uh, I went in for a blood test and um, they they said they were doing some additional testing and that I tested positive positive for what that's what I said positive for what and they said for HIV and um, I said, well, w w what does that mean? And uh, they said, well, it m they weren't quite sure at that point. But of course, I associated with AIDS and death. So that was, uh, it was a big change, being 19 years old and hearing that. Yeah. This was in the, in the 80s? In the 80s, yeah, it was 1985. Wow. In the, yeah. Yeah, um, by then the idea was that HIV or AIDS, that's a deadly disease. So, so how did you feel? What did you do? Well, I, um, because I was a, a troubled teen and had been through a lot, had tried to, um, at 13, tried to kill myself for the first time. I, uh, I took a bunch of pills and I thought it was going to, you know, that, that it would do the job. And, Luckily, my stepfather saved me, but um, I was a pretty desperate teen, and so coming, I was just coming out of that, and I had been doing uh, drugs, so I would, had just stopped doing that, and, um, and so I'd, I'd, I'd been through a lot and a lot of changes, so 
you know, I, I, I tried to ignore it. And uh, may I stop you here, Ken? Mm -hmm. uh, when you said you tried to commit suicide, you, yeah. you were taking drugs and all this, um, how did you get there? Uh, was it the pain? Was it the, the hemophilia? Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely the physical pain that I, it was some hemophilia, that, uh, bleeding into the joint is some of the worst pain known to man. So it's uh, it's an experience that most people wouldn't want to have, but and I experienced that you know a couple of times a month at least, and so by the time I was 13, I wasn't able to hardly walk because of the damage that was done to my joints, and I was very frustrated with uh, with that. I didn't didn't had didn't have the coping skills to deal with that amount of pain, which and and, and the being handicapped. Uh, put me in, 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 in a stressful social situations where I wasn't exactly accepted or I got attention that I didn't want. I, when I wanted to blend in, I, I got a negative attention because of the way I walked. So that this was at school mainly? At school, yeah. So you were rejected? Oh yeah, rejected and plus because of my lack of co coping skills, uh, I had a lot of anger and that, I, that didn't help me at all. I didn't handle situations very well. And, and so the anger finally grew to the point where I thought the only solution, I felt bad about myself because I was in trouble all the time. And I thought the only solution was to just not be here. Yeah. And on top of this, you find out that you are HIV positive because you were just taking medications. <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, it, it, it was troubling so socially probably more because I wasn't sick, but I had HIV. So uh, what, what would that mean as far as how I relate to other people? That was going to be a big challenge. In some ways, I was almost primed for that because of what I experienced before. But part of me was pretty much thought that, it, okay, well, it's another form of suicide. It's another form that I'll be free of this earth. And, and you know, that, that's, it, it, it fed the depression that I, that I had dealt with prior to that. And so I had to find a ways, ways to offset that. My experience with uh, wanting to leave the earth, I've had a few of them. And one of the, one of the most interesting was um, the salve was when I went to Texas and I was in a um, I was in a hotel room ran out of money and I was so desperate that uh, I I decided I was going to kill myself and um, I tried it didn't work I won't go into all the details about how I did it but the next morning I was hallucinating and I had no money I went to a, a, a restaurant and to order food that I knew I couldn't pay for. And I, and I ate two bites, I was so sick, I couldn't even eat it. And I said, call the police. I'd, I'd given up on everything. And they felt so bad for me. Instead of calling the police, they, uh, they called the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army picked me up, they brought me in, they said, you can sleep on our floor. You have three days, you gotta find work. I said, fine, that floor looks awfully inviting to me. I didn't realize how sick I was. I laid on the floor for a day or so. Then the next day, um, I said, this floor is very comfortable. Can I just go ahead and stay here? Because oh. <laughs> wow. uh, I was really yeah. sick. Yeah. I just didn't know it. And uh, they said, no, you don't look too good. We're gonna take you to the hospital. So I went to the hospital. My liver was shutting down. I was dying. I didn't know it. Wow. And um, how that affected me was that they reached out to me they they didn't have to. They visited me in the hospital. They didn't lecture me. They gave me a bus ticket back to California to, wow. my, to my home without any lectures. And I remember that bus ride home. I thought about the compassion they showed me and, um, and how strange that was. Why would they do that? And I just tried to straighten it all out in my head, not to mention I was regrouping from the idea that I think I'm gonna be here for a while. So what do I do now? And that helped create a foundation 
those people and people even before that created a foundation of positive seeds in my mind that when I decided that I did want us to live this life or at least while I was here I wanted to try and make a difference it was people planting those positive seeds or showing me compassion that that gave me the strength a lot of times to, to push forward yeah. or to yeah. believe it's possible yeah. yeah first time at 13 it was your stepfather mm -hmm. and then at 19 it was the Salvation Army and yeah. their compassion and right. no judgment yeah. just buying you the ticket and offering you a place yeah. uh, it wasn't that right. inspired you it inspired me and so when I went when I started changing my life and I decided that I didn't want to escape in drugs um, I started looking for solutions in my life you know, those people were always in the background as quiet cheerleaders and so I had to, to start a new life I you know, went to college studied photography um, I got involved with what they call the hemophilic community which is a group of people that deal with the same thing I deal with mm -hmm. uh, that turned into a job so all along the way I I really was trying to duplicate what other people did for me yeah. because I remembered the goodwill I remembered the compassion I remembered the hope that they tried to give me and I tried to give that to other people I didn't know what it was going to turn into I had no idea that you know I would sit at a 10 year old boy who got HIV from the same blood products I did he was dying and I wasn't his mother was very sad and I was able to fill the gap when she couldn't be there and be there for this boy and that's just one of probably 30 people that I was able to do that with you know be able to, and part of me because I had faced death and in some ways accepted it even though I struggled a lot I still struggle today the struggles don't go away but I have coping skills that I can apply I was able to apply those and be there at a the bedside of a person who was dying my death possibly and not not think about myself but be there for them and in return for that I got a sense of purpose and I felt better about myself and I felt uh, a natural high out yeah. of that exchange yeah you were just helping you just didn't helping. know mm -hmm. the reward would be ten times found out by because accident yes so while helping that little boy and the other hemophilia uh, patients it turned into a job where I was delivering the same product that I was using mm -hmm. I got to know a lot of families I went to camps watched a lot of kids suffering mm -hmm. helped a lot of families and then when I wasn't working for this organization anymore that turned into I became a community activist trying to draw attention to the suffering that I saw yeah. and I wouldn't have done any of that I wouldn't have been able to bring any sort of comfort to any of these people if I had killed myself so yes and then you met your wife and then yes after you fell in love I had a good friend and uh, he introduced me to his daughter and became the mother of my children and she gave me two twins two beautiful daughters oh, yeah yeah yes. yeah beautiful we saw the pictures um, did she know uh, when she decided to go ahead with the pregnancy did she know about your condition she did we uh, we took a risk and um, not a risk I would ever take again I never thought I was gonna have kids actually and uh, it, it just uh, I think a person doesn't know until they're in the situation exactly what they will do or what risk they may or may not take but uh, she knew and uh, and we were very lucky and everything turned out okay they're healthy very healthy children and grandchildren yeah they're uh, yeah. they're they'll be 29 uh, in September the twin the twins daughters, the twin daughters that you have yeah. and they've um, they've uh, they've given me eight um, seven grandchildren 
Wow, and amazing. One more is on the way. One, another one will be born in September. So. So, All right. uh, if I would have killed myself or if I would have taken a different route in my life, where I wasn't as focused on positive things, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to see the results of the effort that I've put, that the positive effort that I've put towards other people and myself. So if you go back in time and talk to that 19-year-old boy who was about to commit suicide, what would you tell him? I would tell him, don't do it at all. Uh, because there's a future that you don't know about. There's a future that you can't imagine. And that there's people that need you. There's people that you'll comfort as they make a transition to leave this earth. And you, you don't want to miss that because it, it's, it's, um, it's an experience that feeds the soul. And, and the silver lining really is that you will I would tell my 19-year-old self that you've got a job to do. You're going to be a father and grandfather, so there's people that that, that will need you, and uh, and then and you'll be rewarded with um, some great experiences. So, and those who are um, on their, you know, deathbed, suffering, and you're there to comfort them. And nobody would know as much as you do what they're going through. Nobody would be so close to them like you were. And you've been, you still continue to, to do it. Yes, I've, uh, I've done hospice work uh, I, I, in, in the hemophilia community and outside the hemophilia community. Um, I, can, I continue to do outreach to people and um, continue to try to grow as a photographer. That's something I studied earlier. Uh, and try to communicate, uh, learning to communicate better with um, people and, and encourage people. Yeah. So. And you see when uh, you went to college and you studied something you love, photography, and then you started to volunteer, and then this became a job, and doors started to open. When you started to think in a positive way, doors started to open. And then you, you met your wife, you fell in love, yes. and other something positive. Uh, and then you got your twin daughters and then your grandchildren. And uh, now you are our star volunteer at TV Santa Barbara. You won the Volunteer of the Year Award and you've won it many times. Um, and that wouldn't have happened. And you know what brought me to Santa Barbara? I was trying to help somebody. There was, for all the people that I've known that have, that have passed from HIV due to bad blood products, uh, there was a person here that was trying to be able to build a memorial and I wanted to help him. So I came to Santa Barbara to help him. But in, I wasn't able to necessarily help him, but in the process of trying to do that outreach, which I had learned from other people, from all the people that have helped me, I, I, I can't, I, none of this I've done alone. It's always been other people uh, holding me up in one form or another. Yes. And then me accepting that help and um, coming here to help somebody else, I ended up helping myself by gaining more skills, by uh, connecting with TVSB, and they've been very generous here, teaching me all kinds of things about TV production. So. And by surviving, I yeah. think, right? Surviving. Yes, and well, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to leave the audience with one last sentence, what would you say? I would say stick. If you're not, if you, if you're struggling with with life and you think you can't take the pain, to take it, to go, to stay, to stay, stick around one more day because you never know how you can make a difference in other people's lives. And and if you're reaching out to people and you don't see results, if you're trying to help other people, the process of planting those seeds, you never know how they will grow. The, none of the, a lot, so many, a majority of the people that help me don't realize how much they help me, how much they help me in, in the way that I search for, for way, better ways to improve my life, better ways of thinking. So uh, 
so just know that it's that I just know that you can't you can't do it alone and and that that out that positive outreach can make a difference and unless you stick around you we won't know what the silver lining will be so yes. stick around yeah. oh, thank you very much again yeah.